This will be a quick introduction to event-driven programming in Visual Basic 2010. So we'll start with a new project and this time we'll select Windows Form and I'm going to call this Event Driven 1 and we say OK. We're now create uh, we're now presented with a screen which gives us a form. This will be a window when we run it and this window like all of the other objects has a number of properties. We can see the text that appears on it and we can change the text to whatever we want. My form. We also have a name to this form. These things down here are called properties and the properties have values. So each object has properties and the properties have values and the values can be changed at the beginning when you're designing it and it can also be changed when the program is running by code. So let's look at some other objects that we can place in a form and to get these up we'll look at the toolbox. We'll click on the toolbox and I'm going to take a button and place a button on my form and I'm also going to place a label on my form. So I'll go down and look for label. Here it is here. I'm going to place a label on my form. I'm going to close this for now. I'm going to come back here and I'll change the name of the label to my label and I'll select the button and I'll change the text on the button to my button. I also want to change the names of these objects so I'm going to come up to the names and I'm going to follow naming convention BTN for button and then whatever I want to call it and for a label I'm going to use a naming convention of LBL so that I know this object is a label and I'm going to call it my label and it's very important to do this and you'll see why later so right now I have uh, two objects I'm also going to change on these objects one of the properties I'm going to change is the font I'm going to increase the font size here and I'm going to increase it to 16 and the same thing on this one increase the font size to 16 so a number of different properties including the position that I can change on these so now I have two objects, well I have three objects, a form, uh, a label and a button and now I'm going to look at events so I'm going to double click on my form and I get a new window in addition to getting a new window I also get an event handler for the form and the event handler I get for the form is on the action, the event of loading a form. When you first run the program form one loads and when that loads we can have something happen. So I'm going to type some code into here. So I'll come into here and I'll type LBL. There's my label. So I take my label dot text, it's one of its properties, and I'll assign a value to that text. And the val value that I'll assign to will be my form has loaded. Okay. And now when I run this the value of the label has changed to my form has loaded. Nothing spectacular yet. I'll stop this from running. And now what I'll do is I'll come back here and I'll look at my button. I'll double click on the button. And by doubling and clicking on the button, I, I can look at the event. So on my button, I have a large number of events which I can access up here when I drag over, drag leave, dispose, cursor change. But the one I want right now, and one of the most common ones, is click. So when the user clicks a button I want something to happen. In this case I will have label my label dot text. So I'll change the value of this to say the button has been clicked. And I can also change button my button. This is the event and this is the button. So the button dot text the text value I'm going to say the text value equals I have been clicked okay then I'll run this let's just check it out here's my little program my form was loaded my button the button has been I have been clicked okay so we'll stop this let's come over here 
and just stretch the form a bit wider so we can see that. Perhaps I move this up a touch here. Let's look at some other things we can do with this. What other attributes of the the uh, button can we change? So let's see, button, my button, dot, let's look for color. Okay, let's look for back color equals and then should we make it Alice blue or perhaps antique white or how about beige something relatively light Biscay is that how we say Biscay so when it's clicked let's change it to Biscay let's run this and I've been clicked and we've changed the background of the color and nothing more happens so let's close this and let's put a counter in now Let's find out when it's been clicked. So we'll say dim clicked as boolean and we'll set it to false. It hasn't been clicked. And then we can come into the click of the button. We'll come in here and we'll say if clicked equals false then if it equals false and we click it then now it's been clicked. So we can say clicked equals true and then we can say else we should have called that clicked once or clicked a time so we're, we're toggling basically here um, so else if it's already true then we'll set it back to false else clicked takes the value of false and what we'll do is let's get this, we'll cut this, pop it down into here and we'll get it to change here and we'll also put this to here and we'll, let's change the color so we can have the color toggling so what do we want um, color dot aqua let's see what happens this might be a mess okay so my form has loaded my button I have been clicked and when I keep clicking it's going to toggle backwards and forwards because I've set my boolean and I've changed that just once. So let's uh, stop this and let's set ourselves a number. Dim count as integer equals zero. And what we'll do is every time we click the button, we'll say dim. We'll say every time we click, click the button, we'll say count takes is assigned the value of count plus one. So we'll increment count and when we increment count on the mouse click we want to display it so let's just um, display it like this we'll say msg message box uh, count is and I think we use ampersand and count where is count here it is ampersand count so we just use a message box to display that and let's run this and here we are running count is one I've been clicked count is two I've been clicked count is three so what use is this well there's all sorts of uses for this for instance you could be playing a game you could have an image moving around the screen it could be a game and every time you click it you might get a score or, or every time you click it the character dies or something happens so we're we're accessing events um, on event driven programming here this has been a quick introduction to event-driven programming. So work through this tutorial, follow it, and try to understand it, and then um, move on to the next one. Thank you.